Eight countries. Eight walls. Eight assignments. We have the wall, and it's huge. We're only out of time. Two days. Time is up. One mission. One, two, three, two. Team. In each episode, two of the world's hottest street artists mash up their styles in one unique task. They need to give it everything they've got to bring color to the streets of the world's most famous cities. From London to Hong Kong, from Ibiza to Bangalore. Across the globe, these artists are challenged to blend their styles and perspectives into a unique work of street art. In each city, a local client gives the assignment to create a special mural. We want it to be a tribute to... Fashion, adrenaline, all has to come down in here. Can they paint the best wall their client has ever seen? Wow. Will clashing styles and egos threaten the challenge? I don't have a lot of requests and I accept most of your requests. Or will a short time frame prove too much to handle? This is Street Art Challenge. In this episode, two worlds collide in one of the busiest cities in the world when Mexico's most famous street artist meets his equivalent on his home turf, India. Hi. Hola. Ricardo. My name is Ricardo. Nice yeah. to meet you, man. Right from the start, the challenge is brought to a whole new level when the artists head downtown to find out more about their unusual assignment. The thing which we would like to see in the world is this transformation of that sense of feeling. Will they nail the brief and capture the feeling the client wants? It's going to be like one, font, one word below the other, or just... Uh, like dream and then reality kind of like together. Can they handle the immense Indian heat? Rollers might have advantage on weather. You know, locals can paint like low, longer than you in the sun. Or will the guy's clashing styles and different opinions lead to the end of this street art challenge? Bangalore lies in the state Karnataka in the mid-south of India. With more than 8 million citizens, this city never sleeps. With a booming IT industry, it's not only one of India's commercial engines. A talented young generation of artists put this place firmly in the future for the Indian art scene. Leaders of this artistic pack are skate legends and clients for the challenge, Psalms and Shake. Skateboarding community, it's a community which opens up access for people who are into such like-mindedness. Maybe from uh, graffiti to guys who are with cameras who would like to do filming, photography, BMXing, parkour, into all different forms of skills. They've built a huge wall in their own skate park, especially for the ultimate street art challenge. I guess it's the first time in India that someone's actually built a wall just so that it can be painted, you know, like, just so that graffiti artists can come and go crazy on it. And to handle such a wall, Sams and Sheikh invited two of the best street artists in the world, starting with Mexican graphic designer Ricardo Gonzalez. Specializing in lettering, typography, and calligraphy, his combination of letter form and art is exceptional. With his own world-renowned and exclusive font, he's one of the most recognizable artists on the scene. Ricardo is teaming up with the bearded wizard, Ulas Hidor, India's most sought-after graffiti artist, famous for his unique style of painting. With extreme precision and passion, he transforms drab walls into beautiful canvases, narrating the stories of our ever-changing times. The artists meet each other in the middle of Bangalore on holy ground. Hi. Hola. Ricardo. My Hola. name is Ricardo. Nice yeah. to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, too. This is the holy cow. This is the holy cow. Yes. Bangalore. Man, this looks really nice. I've been following Ricardo's works online. I've seen his colors, the way, the strokes and the lines what he creates. And it was really exciting to meet the person. So how do you feel about the wall today? Yeah, I'm really curious to see the wall. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely it challenging, so like no sketch. This is good. No wall. Yeah. We'll see what colors we get and yeah, just go let's do it. <laughs> I think it's a great opportunity to learn more about the city, um, the street art, um, just to 
get close to someone that is local, I love that, you know, because you change um, information, you know, and then become close. So I saw his work, it's like, I like it because it has that kind of design style where it's geometric, it's clean, you know. So yeah, his work is really awesome. So I'm looking forward to work with him. Let's roll. Oh, sir. It's going to be like really a challenging exercise to collaborate and come up with a piece. And I think it'll be really nice like where we, that whichever the strongest point of each of us are and wherever we're meeting in those common lines and we're going to pick it up from there and create, trying to create the piece over here. This is my first time in India, so it's definitely kind of culture shock, but it's good, you know? It's good to be uncomfortable. It's good to like be in a place where you don't understand the language. You cannot read the signs. It's good, I like that. Ricardo and Ulas hit the holy stoked skate park where Sams and Sheikh are hyped to show off their 14 meter wall. I don't know how artists work, like graffiti artists, how they're gonna come up with a plan to express that, but I'm really excited to see what's gonna come out of it because graffiti is like skateboarding, like I'm sure it's gonna come out well. Boom. Hey guys. Hello. What's up, Hello. Welcome, bro. Welcome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you guys doing? This is a nice spot. This is okay. the new wall. Been waiting for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Immediately, as soon as I saw him, like, I started like, in my mind like thinking about the sketch already, like colors and doing this and that, and how to work with Ula's work. And yeah, it was just an exciting moment, you know? Is this a smaller wall? Do you want it oh, to? Oh, it's perfect. We left some bars so in case if you say. Oh, we can like we can build it up higher. <laughs> Extend it. If it's not enough, just like bring it higher. Right, yeah. Well, first thought, like when you see the wall, the wall's big, and you're thinking, oh, how am I going to finish in two days? And the more and more when you speak to uh, the Som, uh, Holy Stoke guys, and more and more ideas are coming, and you start thinking, okay, the wall is too small. For a lot of people, if they look at a skate park, they come and ask you, what is it? You know, what do you do here? Or they just try to do some visual action to us and do you go up and do that? Soames is the one who's always like walking around to people. Do you like that? No, no, do you really like watching that? And everyone's like, yeah, we like watching that. Then play, put your hands together and get them to do it better, you know, and try to hype people up. And then people get it that like when they see something happening, they get hyped. It actually hypes that person back as well. And it's, you know, it's just that I'm stoked that you're stoked that I'm stoked that you're stoked. <laughs> you going stoke back. All. Always stoked. The thing which we would like to see in the wall is this transformation of the feeling which Anybody for that battle would come and skate here and then when everybody puts their hands together say, oh, what was that, you know? Oh my God, can you do it again, you know? Like that, that sense of feeling, we want that to be shared on the wall. This place is about the community. It's uh, built by the community. Like uh, the concrete comes, but it's like 10, 15 of the people from who skate here who always show up in the morning to shovel everything around and do all the work on it, you know? They wanted to create something related to skateboarding that motivates them and creates a, a sense of community. I think that's one of the main goals, you know, then that's what we were focusing on. Although it's Ricardo's first time in India, it's definitely not his first time on a skateboard. <laughs> this guy looks so funny. <laughs> Every time you just see a skateboard, you just kind of like do a couple of tricks, just, you know, like fun. Ah! Yeah, I try to like at least just cruise around my neighborhood or go to like local skate park with friends. We don't have to do the crazy tricks. When the guys start sketching, Ricardo comes up with a theme that feels right at home in the skate park. Dream line or dream reality. Dream reality, I think, is a, is a great example to portray what, uh, you know, Bangalore skate community is about, you know, like, if they really want to make something happen, they make it happen. In reality, so it's going to be like one form, one word below the other, or it's just... Uh, like dream and then reality kind of like together. When Ricardo told me about dream reality, uh, and I was like, wow, it just fits. With the guys firmly in the flow, they're moving fast and riffing off each other. We'll try to get like two action sequences or something like that which can come there and on the side here, and then there's dream reality in between. Every skateboarder has this one dream move, which he keep practicing and practicing and practicing to achieve. And there's this one moment when he gets it. So I want to capture that both uh, excitement there, 
where and this is all coming together. Perfect wall, perfect timing, so a bit tight, but we can make it happen. If you just hold it from the third, like low. For this project, the way I'm gonna approach it is by put a baseline for the letters, which is just literally a line underneath, center it, and then on top of that, I just go with a spray can and trace the letters, and from there, building it like slowly to like the right weight. It's a bit of a slow process, but that's a challenge. You know, try to make it as clean as possible, you know, uh, readable, try to have great space in between letters. For me, that's kind of like the goals for my work, so that's the part of the challenge. Ricardo Gonzalez's passion for letter forms is inspired by his childhood and the old letters written by his grandfather. After several studies and tons of experience, he's perfected his own unique style of art. What I do is now a combination of things I've learned down the road. I went to school for graphic design and I learned a little bit about typography. I wasn't aware about it so much at the time. But then I went to New York and then I studied, specialized strictly on typography and calligraphy. So all that stuff like really shaped my work now to like try to be as neat as possible, but also like now painting with spray cans. I think it's um, art that doesn't belong to a gallery, it's in a more free environment. Because once it belongs to the city, it belongs to everybody, you know? It's up there for someone to destroy it or someone for, to take care of it, you know? And that's the beauty of it. Street art, like, is so strong right now. So many great artists and, you know, it's a movement now. So it's a good way to also um, have a voice and, you know, not just do it for you, but do it for the public because that's where it's gonna live. Usually when I start sketching on the wall, like I'll be, I'll, I'll just take a, a spray can with like a thin cap or something like that and I just like mark the graphic out. After the, my main elements is gonna come, I'll be adding the background graphics to it. So I'll be creating like a very geometrical background and on top of that I think I'll be using the grays and the black and whites. Ricardo will collaborate with Ulas, an artist, architect and designer from India. He's well known for his unique views on life and society, which feature heavily in his art. I come from an architecture background. So like when I studied design, uh, it so happened like I was interested in uh, grids and lines and uh, mostly like cubism. Being an architect, it helps me uh, understand the, the planning of the space or like how the volume of the space as such like the colors, the, the gray which is there all around us. And try to, I just try to fill in colors in the gray areas, that's it, yeah. So for me, like Street Art has always been that platform like where I want to connect more with people. Not like for fame or anything like that, but I just, I just want to like, I exist too. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the idea of Street Art for me. With the two-day deadline on their minds, the guys start painting right away. But when Ricardo is thickening his letters, Ulas notices that haste makes waste. I, I, it just came off. You missed two spots there. Wait. I, I went a little bit over, like, in the space. And, uh, like, on the right side, I need a little bit more. So I just, on the Y, I just extended a swoosh just to make it, like, balance. And then, based on that, like, we just we can work like overlay his design on mine, mine on his. So it's patch, patch, and then start blending. So that's the way the collaboration works. When the paint starts to flow, the composition is coming on quickly. But looks are deceiving when it comes to detail, because bringing the lettering to life takes a lot of Ricardo's precious time. So once I have like a rough sketch of the letters and the composition, then I start slowly adding color, and then another color just to like, let's say, Start from light green to like darker green to like purple to like from purple to like pink to like lighter pink. So that's the way it builds. And then from there, I fill up one letter and then I do a shadow and then I jump into the other letter. So I do each letter like, you know, one by one. Uh, with this choice of colors, like when the colors are flowing into each other, it just like, uh, it becomes really, really vibrant. 
so it was really nice to see like this one color was complementing the other color so it was uh, really nice to see the colors getting popped out yeah he definitely thinks or understands what like I'm coming from and I also understand where he's coming from so I think that's a big plus you know like both worlds like kind of combined together and just works perfectly you know like the balance in in, in the symmetry of the, the the design that's what I love you know he got it right away and and it was nice Ulas is a Bangalore resident, and he's done a lot of murals in his city. The portrait he made of Kemp Agoda, the founder of Bangalore, is part of a street art project that was initiated by Josh and Yushin. Ulas has carefully chosen special places in the city to ensure his stories reach as many people as possible. But not without a price. If you want to see them, you have to brave the busiest streets of Bangalore. We are standing at Dhanwantri Road in the middle of Bangalore, at the heart of Bangalore, where all the buses lead to. Bangalore being a city of dreams and migrants and uh, the working class who have come from all different parts of the country to find a home. We are standing in front of a mural that talks about the founder of the city. He wanted it to be site-specific, so we made it a point that we get to know the community around and we uh, venture into their the spaces, talk to them, get to know about them. Who is really looking at our work? Is it people in the buses? Or is it people in the car? We hardly see people walking here, right? But there are people living here. There are people who go to work from here every day. People need to know if, if there's art being displayed here, people need to know what it's about. It can't be something out of the blue. The scorching heat of the Indian afternoon has taken its toll on Ricardo. After working for hours on the wall, he's left the site to cool off and get some refreshment so he can prepare himself for the heat to come. Yeah. Back to work. Sick. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Getting hot in here. Let's take it. It's gonna get hot. Ulas, on the other hand, has no such problems and even takes a moment to enjoy a hot cup of coffee. Ulas might have an advantage on weather. Always, I find that when I travel, like, maybe, you know, locals can paint like long, longer than you in the sun. So I guess it's, that could be an advantage, you know, but just different environment different worlds. Despite the intense rising heat, Ricardo knows he needs to pick up the pace to get as much done as possible. And when he sees that Ulus is changing the original composition, tensions are also on the rise. I respect people's work and, you know, if they're that good, you know, I'm not gonna interfere with that. Like, you do your part, I do mine, and we'll, we'll see how it just organically combines. So I'm gonna have uh, <coughs> these kind of uh, Geometrical things. Yeah. Can you see that? On the leg. So that's like uh, all broken apart, shredded. Is that like breaking all apart? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I think those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get some of those out of that. Yeah, so like they they keep getting shredded out, everything, slowly in bits and pieces. Cool. Like from the leg, from the hand, from everything, like from the shirt. And you can make a sketch and be like, okay, this is how we're gonna do it, but Things change down the down the process, so that's part of the beauty of working with someone else. Like, oh, they see things that you don't see, and you know they have opinions you don't have. So that's part of it. With collaboration and harmony alive and well, it looks like nothing can go wrong with the challenge. Well, almost nothing. Oh. Throughout the city of Bangalore. Other local artists have put up some remarkable artwork. One of Josh's favorite spots is an unfinished mural at the Chickpeat Metro Station. We are in Chickpeat. We are at the metro station, and Chickpeat happens to be the oldest area of Bangalore. Now, what happened here over the past few years is that there were barricades up. Pe people didn't know what was going inside these barricades. But suddenly, this metro station came. And now what we see 
is in the middle of the oldest area of the city. Amongst all of these crowded buildings and people, we have open space because the metro is here that connects to different parts of the city. This artwork is done by Amitabh Kumar. So what Amitabh has done is that uh, through this mural, he's, he's talking about the story of this site. At one point, at how it was once a forest, and uh, from the forest, from one of the trees came a fruit. From the fruit comes out water after it breaks, and from the water, it becomes a lake, and from the lake, people emerge. So that's what Amitabh is really working on, the story of the site itself, through a, a, a sequential narration around this building. The work's still in progress. Unfortunately, what happens is that still, since the site is still under construction, we don't know what's gonna happen next, and they still have a layer of finishing to go. Unfortunately, the cement's fallen over, but it's okay, we'll, we'll touch it up. Back at the wall, Ulus and Ricardo need to concentrate in order to seamlessly bring their elements together. When I went over this piece, I was like really scared. Uh, I was just uh, thinking like, what if I spoil this thing? Because he has got like really neat lines, he's cut it all really nicely. A little difficult task, but like he can do it. But I was a little skeptical, but yeah, it just felt good. His work is very uh, like geometric. Mine is more uh, my work is more round and soft, but maybe we can work like overlay his design on mine, mine on his. Oh, it, it, this one can go over. No, no, no. Let, let this come over. Let okay. this come. This one? I think I'll go over this. Ah, nice. So it looks interlocked. Uh, and then okay. we'll do the shadow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that works. It's not just having patches like his work, my work, his work. We, because that's what kind of happens first day and that's what people don't understand, you know. So patch, patch, and then start blending. So that's the way the collaboration works. That, that shouldn't take long, All right? Sweet. Let's do it, right? When the artists have sealed the deal on patching up the composition, they have to work quickly to cover and color this giant white wall. So Ricardo suits up and transforms himself into an unstoppable underground spray painter with one clear mission, finish the job. It was fun, but like to see him work so fast, like I was, he was just going at it. I was like, I should stop having fun, or yeah, like I should get back to work, 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 work. Yeah, I try to work fast because we have two days to, to do this. You know, I think that's part of working fast because that comes from graffiti. You know, you got like a couple minutes to do like fill up, so you gotta find uh, ways to make the process faster. Not just because you want to be the fastest, just because the process demands it. For me, that's the way I work. And just when Ricardo is finishing his letters, Sam shows up with some friends. They're part of India's most up-and-coming street artist collective, and they didn't travel all this way just to watch. There. That's the thing which is going to be transformed into uh, colors of love. <laughs> We have a container which is uh, 20 foot wide, which we call it as the holy stoked skate shop. Right now it's just blue and brown. We would like to see the local artists leaving some marks over there and uh, adding their impact to the entire venue. I'm pretty sure the vibe is going to be so strong that people are going to be carried away just by color. Before the local artists can start on the container, Psalms wants to make sure all their different ideas come together harmoniously. I was like a pusher selling skateboards. Hey, damn cool. And this one we are flying monkey. Flying monkey with a snapback. Awesome. So I'm a graffiti writer and I write dibs. So this is dibs in Tamar. Uh, how does that communicate uh, into uh, this arena? Majorly when we are doing it, we'll have a one color tone okay. happening. So that is how we link everything together. I'm super positive that these guys can sing. No doubt. <laughs> Once they're all pulling in the right direction, the guys immediately start showing off their talents on the container. Street art and graffiti writing is very new to India. It's, it's still in its infancy. So a lot of people are very fascinated when they see someone uh, doing a piece in public. And for me, as a street artist, I would like it if more and more people come and join the scene, you know? With the local crew kicking off their artwork, Bulis and Ricardo are also making progress on the other side of the skate park. 
and discussing their new game plan. There's going to be like a big patch of grey, which is going to happen here, uh -huh. black and grey and black. So I don't want that to like uh, continue. This is going to just end there. It's just that the volume of the grey is going to increase okay. just on the top. And the volume of the grey is going to come more here. All right, let's do it. Yeah, sure. The location for this project, the Holy Stoked Skate Park, was founded and built by Soms and Shake themselves. And through time, it became more than just a skate park. We just started the company to kind of fill a gap that was there for skateboarding in India, because when we started skating, there was nothing around for skating. So we started Holy Stoke to kind of get boards and get equipment. And then there was just four of us, and then other people got on board, and they were like, yeah, that's cool. What you guys are doing is fun, you and I want to be a part of it. Skateboarding is just because we love it. And uh, making a place, like he said, filling the gap, building the bridge. Soms's passion drew a lot of skate lovers to the park. Now we have a lot more people in the same uh, industry, a lot more skaters. And we continue to do the same. Build more free skate parks and let the people play. As the years progressed, more and more people, not just like individuals, but also all these uh, companies and everyone was interested in skateboarding all of a sudden. So a hobby became business. The idea was just for us to skate. We wanted a skate park. We wanted a free place right next to our house. That was the original motive. And when all these other kids started showing up, uh, it kind of changed, like, everything. The skate park doubles as a social meeting place for young locals. You get to see the bigger picture. You get to see other people, how they live their lives and stuff. And you get to connect with people in so many different uh, places, which you would, like a person like me, would probably not hang out with these kids or never know them if it wasn't for skateboarding or their interest in skateboarding. They used to come back home and look at a magazine and say, what is this trick? How do you do this thing? You go there and show it to them three days. Boom, he has it. Like, I would take probably a year to learn a trick, and he takes it probably three days. So uh, the wavelength of how those kids can learn something is whole different. Like, the energy which they have is different. Thanks to Soms and Shake, the skate park evolved into an all-purpose learning facility. We started hearing about some of these kids have problems at home. Like their parents would come down to the skate park and, you know, come talk to us and say, you know, I'm having this trouble with my son. Can you help with that? And it was, it's, uh, it's like you can motivate them to do things. We wanted to be more involved, you know, get uh, these kids to actually kind of progress in other areas in their life than just skateboarding. And just randomly people would show up and say, you know, I'm free on Friday at this time, I'm free on Sunday on this time, so like I can teach the kids this or I can teach the kids art or I can do a little math lesson. And that's when I think skate park became more than about being just about skateboarding. Seeing the joy the park brings to the community inspires the artists to push their work even further and make the best wall of their lives. Songs and Shake, like, they're really pushing, you know, like, what they love and people, people uh, respond to that. And I feel like it's amazing to be part of it. With the last of the sunlight fading away, Ricardo and Ulas decide to call it a day. Hey man, I think we're good for today. Yeah. You wanna come check it out and see like what we're we gonna do tomorrow? Yeah. Let's, let's check it out. Is that line gonna go all the way there? Yeah. No, 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 no. Till the till the mid. So till, they will just be till the meeting. Middle. Oh, okay, because yeah. I can do maybe a line yeah. there, another one. Yeah. And then start like doing all the other details. Yeah. And then we'll go over this part, that part. Yeah, I think we'll be good for tomorrow. Yeah. Well. All right, sure. let's finish it. Good scenes, man. Take care. With the lettering done and the skaters emerging, the composition comes together fast. But with three loose elements, the wall is far from finished. So when evening falls on Bangalore, the guys only have one day left to fill in all the blanks and combine their pieces into one masterpiece. 
Ricardo flew all the way from Mexico to team up with Ulas, India's best street artist. Ricardo. My name is Ricardo. Nice to meet you, man. Together, they went to the heart of Bangalore to receive a tricky assignment from skate legends Psalms and Shake. The thing which we would like to see in the wall is this transformation of that sense of feeling. So the artists immediately start sketching. But were they able to put the right feeling onto the wall? Or were they completely missing the point? So it's going to be like one, font, one word below the other? Or just... uh, like dream and then reality kind of like together. And when the guys started out, the intense Indian heat turned it into an uneven battle. Ulas might have advantage on weather. You know, locals can paint longer than you in the sun. But the artists don't give up that easily. Fired with Mexican temperament, Ulas and Ricardo give it everything they've got to conquer the tough conditions and make this challenge a success. But at the beginning of day two, all hope seems lost. Ulas bit off more than he could chew. Completely wasted after last night's party, he ended up sleeping off his hangover at the skate park. Yeah. <laughs> I had a crazy night last night. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, first painting, like we got into the crowd, had a couple of beers. I went out, had more beers. <laughs> I came and crashed at the wall. I didn't see you guys come. <laughs> so, I had a conversation with the wall last night when I was like, little thing. I was like, oh, I'm going to finish it tomorrow. And I kind of slept off. That was fun, yeah. <laughs> and while Ulus is having a hard time facing the daylight, Ricardo comes around as fit as a fiddle. Hey, man. How's it going? What's up? What's up? What's up? Not much. It was a party last night. Yeah, it was a crazy party, man. <laughs> Stay back over here. Oh, you look fresh, man. The wall. Reckless life. Respect that for sure. I wish I could do it, but you know, it's like I can't, you know, because I want to be in good condition next day and being able to function and, you know, have fun, enjoy it, not just like, oh, I'm pulling over and like, I hate this. So, what do you think? Yeah, I think I'm good for detailing later. Yeah, I think we did a really good uh, progress yesterday. Like, I mean, just to get the lettering first, and then like you coming out and do the sides. Right, so I right, think that's yeah. gonna be fun. Today is gonna be like where we are. I'm using a couple of his colors, he's using my colors, and like we'll be like uh, trying to merge the piece together. So it's gonna look like as if like his piece is coming out and my piece is getting in, kind of stuff. Ricardo, fresh and wide awake, starts to work on the final part of the wall. Ulus, however, is still worse for wear after last night's party and has trouble focusing on his work. I'm worried about time because last night was a wild night. So like your brain just not works at like the multiple levels. Hangover and heat is a very bad combination. <laughs> After completing his letters, Ricardo is still far from finished and is hurrying to blend his words with Ulus's elements. The part of uh, adding kind of the lines, wavy lines, it's more, it was more about uh, combining the styles. So in order to combine both styles, you have to like have some sort of middle ground. So I found like those lines kind of bridge the gap in styles between like sharp corners and then fluid lines. So that's like the perfect way. It's just a matter of like optical illusion and see like uh, the colors around and how they interact with each other and just make the decision as you go. The presence of the famous Mexican art writer has not gone unnoticed in Bangalore. Suddenly, one of his biggest fans shows up at the wall to ask Ricardo for his opinion. Oh, sick. How long did it take you? Uh, ten days. <laughs> so what happened was a bunch of people has been uh, sending me uh, direct messages through Instagram because they, they see I'm in Bangalore, they don't know what I'm doing, so they're just like, hey, where are you? Like, how can we find the project you're doing? Sick. Nice, man. There's one sticker also. So. Oh, you got stickers too? Yeah. <laughs> 
this kid just came in and he showed me his work, you know, and then he had a present, which was really cool, you know, a couple stickers and a little um, original. That was really nice, you know. Thank you. Yeah, where are you from? <laughs> I should keep put this on my laptop. <laughs> no worries, man. Yeah, Thank come you. by, check it out. It's kind of humbling, you know, that someone comes all the way and, and wants to see you and, you know, like give you something from, from them, so it's cool. The talented crew have finished their colorful piece on the container and await Sam's judgment, well aware that he was very critical of the boy's first draft. How does that communicate? Uh, how, how does that link? We'll have a one color tone okay. happening, so that is how we link everything together. Hey, monkey. What's hey, going on? How's it going? Going crazy. All good. We finally get the venom on the monkey's uh, tooth. You like it? Yep. <laughs> the monkey is the main guy. Okay, Since it's going so so crazy, <laughs> the monkey is transforming his energy, blowing dips, and leaving, setting the old man on fire, technically. <laughs> Initially, I was trying to understand how is it fitting. Now it looks like the monkey is calling dips on the old man. And the old man is actually selling skateboards and trucks and wheels and accessories. So it kind of looks like he's calling shots on the skateboard also, the guy who's actually selling boards. It's a perfect fit. Sick one, man, Trey. Damn cool. Time is running out, and there's still a lot to do. Will Ricardo and Ula succeed in their challenge? All right, we got how much do we have? Let's see. Half an hour? Yeah. 30, 40 minutes? I think I think that's uh, think? good enough time. I'm sort of worried about time because my mind went completely blank. I just wanted so many ideas to fill. And I was like, OK, so then I started limiting it myself down and like I cut down certain areas. So there was a little bit of stress. Do you want me to buff that? The black? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just this much. All right. Blue. And I think the rest of everything goes black. He finished off his work, like, then he started to help me. I was like, wow, thank God, at last, like, I can, I can finish this piece in time. It might have been a bit better, like, just, you know, help him out, um, filling up stuff. They, he already kind of, like, traced, so help him out a little bit and just, uh, yeah, on the process. So I guess I'll speed it up, hopefully. Summoning up the last of their energy, the guys are giving everything they've got to finish the piece on time. Uh, but when you're just like do, trying to hurry it up and then you get like oh, oh, frustrated and go back character again, yeah. And the guys should be worried because with just a few minutes left, Psalms Sheikh and their skate crew are rushing through town on their way to the reveal. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> ah, sweet, hey. man. What do you guys think? Dream reality, I love it. How do you come up with that dream reality? Well, like, it's part of like, what you guys do here. You guys make your dreams come true, you know? You built a skate park, sure. that's respect, you know? I like it. I like the image and the words. It's like, you know, when you go home at night and sometimes you're thinking about the stick that you want to do, and you're like dreaming about that the whole night. You're like, yeah, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And then you come the next day and you like really break yourself to make it. Then that's, it becomes real then, huh? Damn, that, you got it. You got it. That's, that's that. I think Shake uh, really got it, you know, at first sight the, about the message, you know. It's, it's fulfilling. It's, it's fun. I, I like the head, though, this guy's that head. head is yeah. This cool. faceless skater thing, that's awesome as well. Like, because it doesn't matter who it is. Who it is. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to do yeah, the details right. on the face. I was really happy to see their excitement on their face. Uh, they were really happy the wall came out really nice. And it, it just like how Shakes was telling, you get stoked, I get stoked, you get stoked. When they see something happening, they get hyped. It actually hypes that person back as well. And it's like that back and forth. It's just that I'm stoked that you're stoked that I'm stoked. <laughs> you saying we're stoked, stoked all. Like, we're stoked. I think like that moment was there right then. Like, when, uh, like oh, hey, that's really brilliant. Yeah, that was nice work. Oh, like, oh, cool. It's awesome. I like it. Both of them like skating. It's like playing basketball on the same team, so you get more points. <laughs> yeah. The 
it's one thing to like create a piece of art that is special to yourself and it means something to you, but to someone else it may just be whatever, you know? And it's, it's not just about feeding your own ego when you paint it, it's about like telling people something, giving them a message which you leave behind and it's like uh, the greatest thing that graffiti can probably do, you know, like it's great to have a story behind everything that's done and I think the place has a great story and the art has a great story behind it as well. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Oh, I'm a pleasure. It's, it's, it's really pleasure nice. Pleasure to meet you guys. It's great, it's so good. And well, you've got to come back. <laughs> you've got to be here more often anyway. I'm here already. It's, like, it's so good, man. Well, I learned a lot. Uh, he showed some ways on how you can shade well, and I, I, I learned a new way of uh, merging colors and geometry into fluidity. So it was a really nice uh, collaboration. Yeah, what if we build a ramp on it? You got to come and do it again then. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I'm down. I'm down. Hell yeah. I'll be stoked, you know, to like do more collaboration like that because it's like such a gift to like be here and meet more people and you know co collaborate and work, have fun, you know, and skating, hanging out, so like, it was the best. <laughs> it's been a great couple of days, you know. It's beautiful, I'm super happy, very excited. I don't think I'm gonna leave the park anywhere sooner or, you know, be late to the park ever. <laughs>